Good morning. Today is Thursday, April 4th, 2024. Yesterday we discussed the significance of the date, the first of Nisan, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the beginning of the Jewish month of Nisan, in the middle of which occurs Passover. And that date, the beginning of Nisan, is this coming Tuesday, and we're going to announce it on Shabbos, this coming Shabbos in Shul, and read a special portion of the Torah concerning that called Parsha Sachodesh. So we discussed one layer of that date yesterday. I'd like to discuss today another very different layer to the significance of this date, the first day of Nisan, which occurs this Tuesday. And what I want to share with you is from a lecture that I heard from Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg of Blessed Memory. The month of Nisan, the entire month, which starts with the first of the month this Tuesday, is the month of our past redemption from Egypt. We talked yesterday about how it actually started on the first. The actual exodus was on the 15th. That's when we commemorate Passover, Pesach. We have the seders, etc. And according to one opinion in the Talmud, it's not only the date of our past redemption, but it will also be the month of our future redemption, the coming of Mashiach, the Messianic era. The Talmud says, Benisa Nigalu, during the month of Nisan, we were redeemed from Egypt. Ubenisan Asidin Lihigoel, and it will be in the month of Nisan, Nisan that we will be redeemed with the coming of Mashiach that we're waiting for. So it's appropriate today, in advance of the beginning of this important month, to clarify what it is that we believe about that future redemption we anxiously await. Now we express this in the famous well-known line I believe with a full and confident belief in the coming of Mashiach. Mashiach will come. The Messianic era will start. That means that at some point in the future, a person will come and initiate a new era in human history which will bring about a revelation of God's presence in the world. It will bring about an openness and a closeness between ourselves and God that we have never experienced. And it will bring about world peace. Now, that is our belief in a specific future historical event. But there is a second aspect to this belief. As that famous line continues, And even though Mashiach delays, notwithstanding that, I await his coming every day. Now, Some say, some Jews say, some groups of Jews say, that that means that every day I expect Mashiach to come. That is incorrect based on the Talmud. The Talmud, first of all, specifically says the Mashiach will not come on Shabbos, will not come on Yom Tov, will not come on Erev Shabbos Friday, and will not come on Erev Yom Tov. Rather, this statement about awaiting Mashiach is not a statement about when. It is rather about a present attitude that we are required to have now. Every day, I should anxiously await Mashiach. I've shared this story before with some of you. 
Many years ago, this is uh, probably over 30 years ago, we noticed that our son had a bump in his neck. So we took him to the pediatrician. Pediatrician looked at it. And he said to me, uh, your son needs to go to an appointment with a specialist and I'm making the appointment for you now, and I want you to go from my office to his office. Started to get anxious, to have to go directly to a specialist. What could it be? We got to the specialist, a surgeon, and the surgeon said, we have to remove the bump, it was, that was a minor procedure just in his office. We have to remove it. But then we have to send it to pathology to see what it is. And he said, you will get an answer. We will get an answer. It will take about seven days to get an answer about what that thing is. Those were the longest seven days of my life. Because I was constantly... At every moment, Marcy and I were constantly at every moment awaiting the results. I knew the answer would not come right away. But during those seven days, I needed that answer. I missed having that answer. I wanted the answer. And there was not a moment during those seven days that I forgot that I was waiting for it. I never forgot that I was anxiously awaiting getting that answer. I was aware all seven days that I was missing something until I would have that answer. Thank God in that instance, it was benign. There was no further problem. My son, Baruch Hashem, is fine. Thank God. But I think that's a, a good metaphor or example, demonstration of what it means for us to await Mashiach. Because until Mashiach comes, we are in Gullus, we are in exile. No matter how free or secure we are, whether we're here or in Israel, Gullus at the deepest level is not just persecution, or geographical dispersal. Gullus means distance from God. Now, it also means persecution and wandering and assimilation, but those are symptoms of the distance between ourselves and God, of our lack of ability to appreciate and feel close to and aware of God's presence in our current circumstances. So when we say that we anxiously await the coming of Mashiach, it means that we are living now with the reality that we are missing something. There is something that we need that we do not have. And both parts of this belief are necessary. If a person believes Mashiach will come at some point, but is not anxiously awaiting that to happen, doesn't feel right now, today, I'm missing something, I'm lacking something by Mashiach not having come yet, then it means that I see myself now as comfortable, as whole. And that's a mistake. Because the truth is, I am out of place. I am alienated in a profound spiritual and metaphysical way. Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg said these words, quote, There is no greater destructiveness for the Jewish soul than to lose the awareness of the bitterness of our present exile. Of course, 
Jews have lived in every generation, going back centuries, waiting for Mashiach, only to die before Mashiach comes. But those Jews did not die in vain. As long as they live with this awareness, that's what the concept of Mashiach is supposed to do for us now. It is supposed to give us a certain world awareness, self-awareness, where we belong and don't belong in this world. It is now that that belief is applicable, not because we think necessarily that he will come today, but today I feel the lack of Mashiach coming. Now, there are three things that we do not know about Mashiach and the coming Messianic era. Who, when, and what. So let's start with who. Who is it? Well, it will be a person. It's clear from Talmudic sources it will be a person who is descendant of David Amalek, David Amalek, King David. It will be a person who is a tzaddik, a righteous person. Beyond that, we don't know. There are those who claim there is a person who died who will come back to life as Mashiach. So first I have to say to you that there is no basis in Jewish sources for such a belief. And I would also add that throughout our history, almost every time in our history that a claim has been made identifying a specific person as Mashiach, it has led to catastrophe. And our sages warn us not to do that. Not to try to figure out the identity of Mashiach. We will know when we will know. So that's who. When? We don't know. And if we look at the Talmud, the Talmud has long passages that discuss what the world will be like when Mashiach comes. And the amazing thing about that passage is, number one, there are many, many different opinions. And number two, they're contradictory opinions. Some of the opinions say when the Jewish people are so holy and they're so deserving and so observant, then Mashiach will come. And then there are other opinions that say just the opposite, that when the, when the Jewish world sinks so low and is so immoral and is so messed up, that's when Mashiach will come to save us. So there is no guidance. We don't know. And in fact, our sages criticized those who predicted, tried to predict the date. First of all, so far, every single one of them has been wrong, which hasn't stopped many, many great scholars from identifying dates when Mashiach would come. And our sages say, don't do that. When my kids were little, they went to a school, a Jewish school, and they learned a song that they sang at home endlessly. Have no fear, Mashiach will be here this year. I don't think that's the right approach. Because you don't know that Mashiach will be here this year. And when you make those kinds of claims, people start to take the subject as a joke. And it's not. It's not the right thing to do that, to make promises that you're not able to keep. So that's when. What? What will be when Mashiach comes? Well, here's what we know. All of our prophets tell us the same thing. There will be peace in the world. There will be religious freedom for Jews. That will be a consequence of the openness, the revealed nature of God's presence. That's all we know for sure. There's a famous prophecy from the prophet Yeshayahu Anavi, the prophet Isaiah, who says that when the Messiah comes, the wolf will lie with the lamb. Famous verse. 
So there's a question about that verse. Does that mean that the prophet is promising that the Messianic era will introduce a new natural order that lions and lambs will not, that lions will not eat lambs, lambs will not be afraid of lions, a new, a new world order, that there will literally be no sickness, no difficulty, lives will be miraculous, there'll be no temptation. There are those who assert that. The other way to take it, that's one opinion quoted in the Talmud, but the other opinion is that the verse, a wolf lying with a lamb, is a metaphor. It means there'll be peace. It means Jews will be free to serve God. It means the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, will be rebuilt in, in Jerusalem. But you're still going to have to change your tires. You're still going to have to shovel your snow. You're still going to have to pay your income tax. You're still going to have to get a flu shot. And it's going to be normal life, regular normal life, like we see it today, just with a couple of amazing things happening. So this is a dispute in the Talmud, and it's unresolved. The only source that attempts to codify this dispute is the Rambam, Maimonides. And Maimonides accepts the second view. It's going to be the way it is now, but with a couple of very important changes. But regardless of what we don't know, Mashiach and redemption must be a reality for us now. So I want to tell you a story. I want to finish with a story. It's not a dramatic story. It doesn't have a slogan that you could put on a billboard or a bumper sticker. You can't make a good post for Instagram with it. It's a very subtle story. But it expresses what I think is the authentic Jewish belief about Mashiach. So I told you the Talmud says, at least according to one opinion, that the Mashiach will come during the month of Nisan. That's one opinion. Now, the month of Nisan is followed by the month of Iyar. Iyar is the second month. Someone was once driving Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. And Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was sitting in the car. And he gave a sigh. He didn't say a word. Just gave a sigh. And his driver asked him, Rebbe, what's wrong? And Ramosha said, well, tonight is Rosh Chodesh Iyar. Tonight is the beginning of the month of Iyar, the second month of the year, which means that in just a couple of hours, the month of Nisan will be over. And that means that we must wait until next year, Nisan, for Mashiach to come. Ramosha did not make any demands, didn't make any promises. Ramosha didn't even say anything until he was asked. He didn't volunteer this observation. It was just an inner feeling that escaped in a sigh. Ramosha didn't feel he had to put up a sign or make promises about when it will be or what it's going to be like. Ramosha never said anything like forcing God's hand. For Ramosha, Mashiach was simply a reality. That's it. He lived with the reality that every moment of his life, he was missing something. And when, according to his thinking, the time when it could have happened had passed until the next year, he went back to this feeling of longing 
and missing something that he needs. Rav Moshe realized that until that happens, we are not whole. We need Mashiach. And we say to God, please send Mashiach quickly, please, please. Perhaps more than any year in memory, this Nisan, beginning this Tuesday, begins with an urgent need for redemption of the Jewish people. For Israel, for our soldiers, for hostages, for Jews around the world. We need redemption, we need Mashiach like never before. So as Nisan approaches, let's try to live with that reality. To recognize how much we miss until Mashiach comes. My friends, I wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.